It's the Tom Likas Show. I know him. I know him. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Coming up this hour, a little later on, we'll be joined by comedian Carlos Garcia. He'll be here in studio. And in the meantime, we talk to those of you who are feeling vengeful against your soon-to-be former employer or maybe your former employer. How many of you have been fired from a job, downsized, right-sized, had an axe put in your back, and now you feel like you want to get revenge? Or maybe you've already done that. Uh, if you have, we want to hear your story at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Ed on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I got a great, great uh, name for the show. Uh, oh, the well, like, <laughs> you yeah. talking about the Fantasia Barino uh, eviction show? <laughs> oh yeah, check this out. Riches to rags. <laughs> Blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. <laughs> Love that. I'm telling you, there's a show there. Uh, the <laughs> and yet, you know what? We've been talking about it so much. I think uh, somebody's going to do it. I'll tell you what, if you want a production partner, I'll, I'll I'll chip in on the production costs. I will. I'd love to do that. Yeah, I know. I know. I won't get credit, Dean. Somebody will just do it. But I'd be happy to put my money where my mouth is and uh, be one of the producers of that show. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Let's say hi to Marissa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. Hi. Um, well, I'm 19 years old, but this happened to me last year, and I was 18 still. Um, my boss tried. I, w I was working at, as a cashier in a restaurant, and my boss tried um, always getting with me, and he was like this old 40-year-old man who had kids. His wife was, like, 20 years younger. And it was really disgusting. Well, I thought, because, you know, she was, like, almost my age. But he always tried getting with me, and he was always getting with the other waitresses. But I was always telling him no. So he ended up firing me after uh, working there for approximately six months. He ended up firing me because I was always telling him no. And, like, four months later, he got his liquor license taken away. I didn't even call him. I didn't even say anything. They found out that he was giving um, liquor to underage girls, so they took it away. And I didn't even have to do anything. You sound pretty happy about that. Yeah, I am. So do you. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to share my story with you. I'm, I'm glad you did. Joe on the Tom Likas Show, hello. How are you doing, Tom? Doing great. Yeah, I was telling you that uh, I shut down a whole company, man, because they backstabbed me. Really? Yeah, it was a family-owned trucking company. <laughs> and what did they do? Well, we come into work. I'm the only shows up. The other ones are coming half hour, two hours late, drunk off their ass, and everything. Well, uh, three weeks ago, I got fired because we had to cut back. I went for my employment, and they said no. Cause they claimed I was stealing from the company. Well, I went to the um, Department of Transportation and reported all the violations of their equipment, of their drivers. Two weeks later, they had a surprise visit. They got caught. All the drivers were drug tested and came out positive. All their equipment that were under, not up to standard, of uh, California Highway Patrol. And all the paperwork were invalid. <laughs> you sound pretty proud of this. Oh, yeah. I work my butt off for these guys, and I get treated like crap for them. And I paid them back. <laughs> well, thank you for telling us that story, Joe. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lalo, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Uh, wanna, how's it going? Uh, not that you care, but uh, uh, I worked a long time, Bob. Five, six years to help start a uh, small business with uh, with somebody. And throughout the business, well, first started, they go, uh, this was for us and how we're going to build the shop up. Unfortunately, I had nothing on paper saying that I was part of the business. So he was a younger guy. He liked to go out, and he, I would have to run the shop quite a bit. So for about three years, I pretty much ran the shop, made him tons of money, and I got paid accordingly. Fine. 
But as soon as he got uh, in a serious relationship, he he was at, he was coming to shop more often. So he would come in every day, and guess what? He had no real need for me anymore because we would do, him and I would do the same job. So after a little while, um, guess what? I get I get axed because I don't I'm not really needed there every day, and I'll, which surprised for me because all this time I believed that. I belong there. It was my shop also. But lesson learned, I'll get everything on paper. Really? So, yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, any, I'll just give anybody advice. If you're younger and you're putting any time in business, get anything in writing. Because no matter what somebody tells you or somebody promises you and, and how they make you feel about it, you know, I put in the extra mile, I put in the extra time, and I, at the end of the day, I, I walked away with nothing. You know, he has a million-dollar business, and I have a thank you, you know, a handshake on the way out. So so now I'm planning to go straight down the, down the street and hit up one of the competitors and kind of saying, hey, what, what do you guys want to offer me? I have, uh, what do you guys want to know? So I guess that's my small revenge and maybe get a little bit of contestation on it. Now, you do understand, and I don't know what kind of business it is or what kind of secrets you know, but... Uh, certain things you know about an employer are considered trade secrets, and if you reveal them to a new employer, uh, he could sue you uh, and, and get damages out of you and the employer. You know what? I, I'm not. I wouldn't say no specific trade secrets because I, I even think that's wrong morally. But I, I would have to uh, maybe help improve on their business on their end of, of their competitors more than actual trade secrets because I, I don't. I don't. Um, morally, that'll be wrong for me to say anything like that. And uh, legally, of course, I, I mean, I don't have anything in that term, but I want to say no, no trade secrets, but I do have the know-how, and I, I can improve a, a business from the knowledge I picked up. And knowing that I'm the, uh, I came from the competitors, I'm sure I could probably make some money off it. So, uh, like I said, uh, just anybody who, who's uh, who's young and starting a business, get everything in writing, everything, know everything. That way, uh, keep everything will stay friendly. All right. Lalo, thank you for that. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking to people who got the axe, and now they want to get revenge. Diana, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, how are you? Well, Great. me, I don't know if it's, I have a couple of things. I just got fired at uh, my restaurant for, there's a, a party of eight came in, and, and I split a soup for some kids, and they fired me for that. But I think it has to do with, I'm a lesbian, and, it, and it, I think it started with discrimination since I started there. And my boss told me that I'm not allowed to talk about my relationship. And ever since then, I've just been harassed, and I called to report it to the HR, and they told me that I don't know the meaning of discrimination. So I'm pissed off right now. It's been a couple of days. I'm surprised you haven't hired an attorney. Yeah, that's what everybody's telling me, and I want to... <laughs> You don't know. I want, I want to tell you so bad what it is. I can't tell you the name they told me so. But um, I, I don't well, know. Well, you what should to tell do. the name of the restaurant to the attorney. Yeah, do you think I should? I do. Um, I know. I, I it's, it's, you know, I, that my boss told me I'm not allowed to talk about my situation, my relationship. But everybody else could talk about their. Their boyfriends and, and everything else. Well, in in some it. states, that might be legal, but in California. Um, uh, being uh, gay or lesbian uh, is a protected class, just like uh, you are protected against discrimination because of your gender, because of your race, because of your religion, because of your handicap. In California, that also includes your sexual orientation. Right. I, I think I'm going to do, you know what, I really, I listen to you every day. <laughs> I think oh, you're great. Thank you. Okay, and um, I think I'm going to do that then. Thank you so much for listening to me. I just wanted to say that I know they know who they are. Let me know what happens. Okay, I'll call you back and let you know. My name's Diana. <laughs> name's Diana. You don't want to do that, Diana. <laughs> okay. They're going to be... <laughs> Thank you, Tom. You're wonderful, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, Appreciate Tom. the call. I'm number one in the lesbian community. Do you know that? It's absolutely true. Number one. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Pretty good. All right. Let's see. Um, I have a question. If whether or not I should uh, report this last guy that I worked for. <clears throat> um, basically, um, 
I was working under the table for him, stuff like that, no benefits, nothing like that. Um, it was great work, <clears throat> but I was getting really underpaid. But um, my thing is, isn't necessarily a vengeance thing. It's just um, what he admitted to, to, to doing I don't really like. <clears throat> um, we were on the job, taking a break, and I overheard him having a conversation with some guys about um, how <clears throat> he was stopped at the border one time for uh, – being accused of smuggling, so on and so forth. Um, the reason why uh, apparently that they had that tip was because <clears throat> this dude's wife is um, related to a well-known cartel member. And um, the conversation went on, and he openly admitted basically that um, these guys overlooked something that he was bringing over. He also hires uh, people with no documents, no papers, um, which really bugs me because, you know, they get paid well, I get paid crap, and I'm a citizen. So, uh, I, I mean, what, what should I do, Tom? Should I report them? Or? Well, I mean, again, uh, me, my, my history has been uh, the best way to get revenge on a former employer is to compete with them and kick their ass. Hmm. And I've done it more than once. So rather than getting into that world of making anonymous phone calls or writing letters... Generally, what I do is I have, uh, over the years, uh, found a way to get in the face of my former employer uh, legally by simply being their competition mm -hmm. and then showing them what they gave up. Like a success is best kind of thing, huh? That's what I believe. Got it. Got you. All right. Appreciate appreciate the time, Tom. All, All right. right. Thank Later. you. Appreciate the call. I do. All right. Coming up next, comedian Carlos Benzia in studio. Stay right there. Tom Likas. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likas Show The Tom Likas Show Now with the shortest commercial breaks of all time That's the deal And in studio with us Carlos Let's see you Good to see you again Man, I, I feel bad I never got fired. Oh, no, I did get fired one time. I did get fired really? once. Really? Yeah, from a, by a lesbian. That, that, lesbian <laughs> sparked, <laughs> that lesbian sparked it up for me. I got fired f fired by a lesbian, and it, she was just, like, really like really rude, mean lesbian chick. And, you know, she was very intimidating. And I was, like, 18 years old, and, and I was going to college. And this just lesbian chick was like, this is not the way you print. And, this, and I was just like, whoa, why you got to be mean like that? You're... <laughs> Should be like my mom, bitch, you know, and she's, <laughs> dude, she fired me. I felt so, like that's the only time I've ever been fired. I felt so bad, but I feel really bad for a lot of people right now. I got, you know, I, I've got employees that, that I haven't given a demotion to. I, you know, and I look at it like, you know, hopefully this won't be too long and I'll eat it for a while because, you know, I'm paying them decent money, but I, you know, you feel bad for them as well, man. I mean, everybody's caught up in this thing. And so the way I look at it is, you know what? I'm going to make less money. But that's okay. I, I don't understand how if I if if some company made you know twenty million dollars last year and this year they only profited two million, how like that's they're oh my god we only made two million we should have made twenty five million but you, you made two million and everybody right. got paid all your employees got paid you made two million why why do you need more than that like can't you just have one or two years where hey things weren't that great and yeah. we didn't make that much money well there was a story about Starbucks you see this story Starbucks in the third quarter of last year uh, they had a the big headline was Starbucks showed a ninety five percent decrease in profits right which meant they only made five million. Oh, so that meant they had to start cutting. But well, well, see, that I don't understand. I don't. Why would you cut if you if you made money? You made money. You are profitable. All your employees are making money. You're giving back to the community. These guys are going and buying. I mean, it's not like I, I, what are they afraid of? That you know what I mean? We have employees and we're going to pay them, and then they're going to go to Pete's and buy coffee at Pete's instead of Starbucks. And it's like, do your just. I don't get it. I you know I, I know I'm not going to make as much money this year because of the economy. And you know you go on tour and where I was doing ten thousand seats. 
I'll do five to seven thousand seats, and you know, sixty percent of business right now for us is unbelievable. We have people canceling concerts. I mean, huge acts eating it out there. The Eagles and uh, what's her name, uh, Michael Jackson's sister, she canceled her whole tour mm-hmm. supposedly for other reasons. But I mean, you know, ticket sales aren't great. But that doesn't mean you got to like you know trim your fat and get rid of employees and all of us i'm not doing that man no nobody's taking a pay cut on my payroll and we'll also it also it depends on how long it's gonna go on i mean look you know how hard it is to find good people to do anything yes i mean let's say this thing starts to turn around in the middle of 2009 right uh, how are you gonna go out and find the kind of people you just got rid of who are now working for your competitors or they've now started their own companies i mean think ahead and everybody's running around like their pants are on fire. Right. When the reality is, look, we've had bad times. This is the worst recession of our lifetime. Right. Uh, but we've had recessions before. Uh, we've had uh, the economy in decline before. 1975, 1981, 1990. It's happened before. Yep. Then we come out of it and we move on. Sometimes there's a big stock market rally and there's a big uh, rally in uh, uh, profits and business comes back. So maybe you don't just immediately start firing the minute you get one. One bad earnings report. Well, yeah, and you know what? It's it's also good to get rid of like and taking it to the wine. There's a lot of there are a lot of people making wine that shouldn't be making wine right now. Yeah. There are a lot of wines out there that you and I both know should not be bottled at all. And those companies are most likely gonna go out of business because they're not doing a good product. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with comedy clubs slimming down and some comedy clubs going out of business because they're not bringing the right guys and, you know, good comedians flourishing and the bad ones kind of going, hey, times are tough. We don't want to do this anymore. There's something really okay about that. It's kind of survival of the fittest. Go back. Let's see who's going to survive. And But I don't freak out. Everybody's freaked out. Even, you know, my family is like, oh, my God. But the beauty of this is that I get to tell my family, hey, man, economy's bad. I can't lend you money anymore. (laughs) So that's that's the good part about for me. And it's real now, you know, because I can actually go, look, I was making a lot more money. And now I can't afford to. I got a house to pay for, and I can't afford to be giving you guys this much anymore. So, you know, instead of 300 I'll give you 30 bucks. Or or I caught somebody today because somebody called me up, and they were like, hey, man, uh, you know, I got to get to work, and I need my brakes fixed. And I'm like, not a problem, man. Where are you getting your brake fixed? I'll call them. I'll give them my credit card. They can take care of it. I'll pay for your brakes. Well, I'm not taking it somewhere like that. It's my, <laughs> see, it's, it's this guy that's going to fix my brakes and, and I'm not going to pay him. So if you give me the 300 bucks, you know, I was like, you know what? He's not going to guarantee your work, bro. Why don't you just take it to a break place? And that way the work is guaranteed. If anything goes wrong, everything's great. Well, I don't know, man. I don't listen. That's the deal. You want me to fix your brakes? I'll fix your brakes. Tell me where you're taking your car. We're done. And then call me back. I haven't got a phone call yet, so I don't know what kind. He's going to call back with some kind of scam. Uh, write it to Chewy Castro. What? Chewy? Who's that? I've never been to that place. It's a brick place in East LA. You know what I mean? I don't, so I don't know what's going on with that. But it's like when you try to buy homeless people a sandwich. They don't want a sandwich. They want cash. <laughs> oh my God. That happened to me in, um, where was it? Uh, I was walking into, oh, it's, it's a rock and roll McDonald's. It's in downtown Chicago. It's, it's cold. It's like 10 degrees, you know, with the wind chill. I'm walking in. The guy looks at me in the face and he goes, yo, man, can you get me a Big Mac? <laughs> right in my face. Can you get me a Big Mac? So I walk in, I eat, I get him a Big Mac. On the way out, I'm happy. Like, I'm literally feeling good about myself as a human being. I'm like, yo, man, I'm getting him a Big Mac. I give him the Big Mac. He looks up and goes, what's this bull? I was like, what? He's like, what, what is this? I said, you asked me for a Big Mac. He's like, you know the code, man. You know the code. I was like, what? He's like, you know, I say Big Mac, you give me money, then I go shoot up. You know the code. I was like, bro, you should have just told me straight up I want to shoot up. I would have given you that money. But you asked me for it. Now I ain't giving you anything. And I just walked away. I can't believe, like, he was pissed at me. Like, I'm the bad guy for getting, he should have, like, for all, I, I mean, and I know this is stupid because you probably don't have transistor radios or anything. But if you guys are home, just be real. It's like the guy that came out with the first, it wasn't a scam, but the first guy that started with, look, I need beer. Yeah, why lie? I want a beer. <laughs> that guy made a lot of money because he was being honest. Just be honest with me. Tell me straight up, you know, hey, 
I got a habit, and this is not going to change. And if you give me 20 bucks, you'll make me happy for one night. I'll hook him up. If that's, I'll hook him up. That's not a big deal. But don't, don't tell me you need a sandwich and then, you know, cause a lot of people getting fired. And I know this for a fact cause I got friends. Not a lot, not, I don't know how many, but some of the people getting fired right now, a lot, of, they wouldn't be fired if they were good employees. It, this is a really good time to get rid of employees that aren't, you know, producing for you. And a lot of the people that are getting fired, are that and they don't want to deal with that because you know it's hard especially in california it's hard to fire somebody you got to have reasons man i like was going to fire somebody and i had to call my lawyer and go i want to fire him why well i you know i don't like the job that they're doing no specifically what did they do wrong and i'm like well why does it matter they're like dude if you fire them for no reason they can call and they can get back and they can sue you and i'm like I can't fire somebody just because I don't like them. They're like, no, you cannot fire somebody just because you do not like their personality. You cannot. You have to actually have some kind of reason. So this is a good time to be like, I can't afford to pay you, even if you can. This So, you know, I don't have any employees like that. Thank God. All, all my guys are good. But it would be a good time if I needed that. You know what I mean? That would be a great excuse. I know a lot of people are using it. Right. It's a good one. Yes. And, and some people, some of you guys got to assess whether you're doing a good job or not. There's a lot of people that go to work on a daily basis and just do half-ass work because it's not really what you want to do and it's not really your calling and it's just a job. And this is the time where you, where, you know, you got to realize you got to come, you got to come with it, man, because have it, just having a job right now. You're lucky if you have a decent job and they haven't taken away your benefits yet. If you're that person, you need to go into work and there's a whistle while you work. Bring a bird on your shoulder. Do whatever you need to do. Skip, you know, do somebody. Whatever you need to do to keep your job. I'm serious, man. I'm, I, listen, I would do whatever I needed to do. If I was like in the comedy club circuit and you know what I mean? If Mitzi was like, oh, come over. I'd go to Mitzi's house right now for spots. I'm telling you right now. Mitzi, if you're listening, I'm on my way to your house right now. That ain't even the, oh, Carlos, I'm there, baby. Whatever you need. Whatever, whatever I need to do to keep my job. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll come back with comedian Carlos Mencia and your telephone call. Time. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thomas Mencia here in studio. And uh, you're doing a, a benefit performance? Yeah, I'm doing a benefit performance for a school in Santa Monica on Sunday. So you go to my website, carlosmencia.com, and there check out is. all the details. It's in Santa Monica, and it's got to be uh, to benefit the Edison Language Academy. There you go. And what do they do? They they actually teach uh, they actually teach kids to speak Spanish and English at the same time. So help them benefit, which which by the way is a huge deal for me, just on a personal level, because I got a cousin who will remain nameless. Who came to this country at the age of, I think, I think he was 12, 13. He's now like 45 or something like that. But my cousin had a daughter who was born in this country and she had to take ESL classes when she got to school. Oh my God. Really? She was born in this country, bro. And she had to take ESL. Well, because here's what happens. And this is sad, but true. Like parents come from El Salvador, Guatemala, a lot of times. And I mean, when you go to my mom's house, it's still the case. Uh, they say, I remember my mom saying to me, mijo, we came to this country so you can be anything you want, go to school and become somebody. And from that moment on, she never changed the channel from Telemundo and Univision. <laughs> never. So my whole life was listening to, hola, que pasó? And you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden I'm going to school and everybody's speaking English and I'm just like, whoa, this is like a whole nother world. Cause in East LA, Specifically in East LA, you can literally not have to speak a word of English and completely be okay. When you go to the supermarket, como esta señora, when you go to this place, hey, que pasó, when you go to this place, there are places in East LA where if you go order in English, they look at you funny. They look at you like, who, who is this person speaking English? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I've gotten into fights with people where I'm like, hey, can I get a, can I get a, 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 a two carne asada tacos? ¿Qué quieres? Bro, we're in America, dude. Just because it's Olympic Boulevard, it doesn't mean you don't understand <laughs> carne asada tacos, bro. Can I get two of them? I know you know what two carne asada... There's an Asian guy right there. He ordered in Spanish. Is that what you're telling me? And then they look at me all mad. Oh, because what? You too big to speak Spanish? No, I'm just... I'm in America, for Christ's sakes. Could you just give me two tacos? You know what I ordered. Why are you getting mad at me? And then we're having a fight in English. And he's like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you the order in English. You're already talking to me in English. We already have this. Sometimes it's, and then, and then the opposite is true sometimes too. I'll never forget, I was at a, I think I was at a circuit city. And I was going to return something. And there were two people in front of me. Right, the the guy behind the counter, whose name was uh, Cuauhtémoc, spelled with a Q, the most Mexican name in the history of Mexican names. So the guy Cuauhtémoc says to the guy, you know, behind, he goes, uh, "Okay, uh, you know, what was the problem?" Like that, right? It's, it's customer service counter, and the guy looks at him and he goes, "The video game I buy, he no." That's what he says. <laughs> so I immediately go, "Okay, this is going to be pretty quick. They're going to figure it out." The guy behind the counter goes, I no understand what, what you mean. <laughs> and the other guy goes, the video game I buy, eat no. And then the other guy goes, what you mean? And I had to go, oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> and then I go, habla espanol, habla espanol. And they were both like, si, sí, then do it in Spanish. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, I get that you're trying, but this is like, you've been back and forth with no video game I buy. Let's just move on here. <laughs> it, it, it was, it was like crazy. And, and I, rem I remember as a kid, we were, we were with my father one time. And I remember this because we were going down Olympic Boulevard and we were on Arizona. I'll never forget it. And we were passing by a taco place, a taco place, this other place. And I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, this is the reason a lot of American people get mad at us. Because we come to this country and we change the way it looks and everything all of a sudden. Because a lot of people don't know that East L.A. used to be a big, big Jewish neighborhood back in the days in the early 1900s. Yeah. So I said, you know, we drove the Jews out and we started naming Brooklyn Avenue Cesar Chavez Avenue. And, you know, it, sometimes that bothers people. And my dad was like, why? Why is that a problem? I don't understand. Everybody here speaks Spanish. He's in Spanish. That's no problem. We know her nobody. I go, well, I don't know. We live right next to Monterey Park, which is one of the biggest Asian communities in the world. And I remember we go down Mission Road or whatever it is. We get to Atlantic and, and we're looking for this Chinese restaurant and all the signs are in Chinese. And my dad goes, what is this? How come everything is in Chinese? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Where's this restaurant? And I was like, ha ha, ha ha. And he was like, oh no, he's different. He's different because nobody knows Chinese. I'm like, bro, that's my point, dude. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And he was just like, well, how come they can't put the little house with an antenna and then underneath in English what it says? And I'm just like, that's exactly what I'm saying. Put, you know what, put panaderia and then underneath that put bakery. That's all I'm saying. And so for me, it, it's personal that, especially kids that come from foreign countries, but you know, all kids that, that A, that because of immigrants at Spanish not get um, diminished like it's a lot of people in the world speak Spanish and it's actually not a bad language to learn from an intellectual standpoint but we have so many immigrants here that we look at Spanish like oh that's the language of the fruit pickers but you know it, it's actually a positive thing to do and from the other perspective I think it's really important that you know kids <coughs> know better excuse me than just you know, Spanish and, and having, you know, not, not an extensive vocabulary and being in this country. And I don't, I don't know. I think it's a good thing for these kids to do. So I, you know, I try to give back and see, but some of the parents were upset. I don't know how many, some of the parents from the school were upset because it was Carlos Mencia. And, you know, I say the word beaner and I'm the devil to some of these people. So <laughs> I don't even get it, man. I don't even get it. I, I like, I come on the radio and I don't cuss and I'm funny or I go there and I'm, you know, like, I'm not going to go, if there's kids there, I'm not going to go out there and pull out my wanker for Christ's sakes or start off with, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm not going to go out there and go, any kids in here? Hey, anybody notice how uh, our future president looks like Curious George? I'm not going to start off with a joke like that. I promise, even oh, though he God. does. <laughs> even though he does. 
He's got the big ears. He's got the big ears, the 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 kind of high yellow skin, and if you look at the forehead, the the actual cut of his hair, he totally looks like Curious George. And I was thinking, if if our future president walked out onto the stage, and vice president was wearing a yellow trench coat, you would crap your pants. That would be the funniest thing you've ever seen. But I'm not going to do that joke during this one because I don't want to be offensive to the African American people there. We'll take a uh, break coming up here, but let's take a couple of phone calls before we do with Carlos Mencia. 1-800-5800-TOM is our number. It's 1-800-5800-866. It's Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Carlos. What's going on, buddy? Hey, bro. Fellow Bulldog. Hey, listen, I know exactly what you mean. I grew up in uh, City Terrace. I remember when Monterey Park was white. Jesus, you go back to those days when before it was Asian? Oh, hell yeah. And I remember, dude, we, we go into Monterey Park to have dim sum, you know, Chinese breakfast. And what better way to walk into a, a room full of Chinese and then four large Mexicans come in and they get seated quickly? That was, uh, that was all. You know what? I, I remember when Monterey Park was white as well because we used to go over there trick or treating because that's where they gave the best candies. Because yeah, I, 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 I used to, I mean, I remember, I knew I didn't live in a, like when I was a kid, I didn't know I lived in the projects because the projects were really, really new at the time. Here's when I knew I lived in a bad neighborhood. When I went trick or treating and I said trick or treat and I opened my bag and I literally saw a tamale fall into my bag and I heard a loud thump and I just looked up like did you just put a tamale in my trick-or-treat bag and she was like what's the problem and I was like oh my god and I just looked around at my brothers like we live in the ghetto it was like the moment where I realized our life sucks we live in the projects I remember when when they just got rid of uh, thrifties right there at Garvey and Atlantic they just turned into another Chinese market just like Last year. Wow. Well, you and, know, things change, man. And, and I, yeah, it's, 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 uh. Hey, they got menudo. Oh, oh, do they really? They have menudo at the Chinese market? Yeah, they know, they call it, they, you know, in the, in the dim sum, like I said, it's like a Chinese breakfast. They come around with a little cart. They, uh, they have something they call tripe. They, basically, it's menudo, but they also use parts of the lung in it. Wow. You well, got, I mean, I swear to God, dude, you got to come with me and the family one day. We will, we will take you and we will get seated like that. And the managers know us like that. I that's mean, awesome. we are, we are the big boys. Well, but yeah, yeah, for, uh, for anybody in the future who wants to invite me to go eat, uh, you should use words like delicious, <laughs> unbelievable, great tasting cuisine. Oh, there's lungs and tripe in it. <laughs> and pieces of lung in it. <laughs> That's not, that's not really, thank you, bro. I'll do it just for the experience, I promise, but not, not, the, not the place I want to go to eat, Tom. We'll take a break. More with Carlos Bencia and your phone call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas show coming to you from Hollywood at one 800 800 top We are with Carlos Bencia, who is doing a special benefit performance this Sunday, 7 p.m., Barnum Hall, Santa Monica High School. And um, it is to benefit the Edison Language Academy, Santa Monica. And uh, you can get tickets at brownpapertickets.com or get details at carlosbencia.com. There you go. All right, let's take some calls here. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, man? How you doing? I'm all right. Let me tell you, my parents came to this country when they got married at the age of 19, each with knowing nothing about the country, a lot less about their about their own. Where they come from, there was no, not even school. So when they got here, they couldn't even teach us that. Not a language or school so uh even when they had to teach us our homework yeah <laughs> we would get asked man what do you think about that <laughs> oh you're you're lucky that they even looked my 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 parents never even bothered i mean you know i every once in a while i'd be like hey dad i got i got this algebra thing and he would just look at me and go algebra what and i was like nothing dad <laughs> just move on you know they had the the, the basic simple education and it's 
it you it, it's so it's so easy when you have somebody there that knows what algebra is and they go no look x equals this so it's really saying five plus one but the x is five you kind of get that but when you have somebody that you know that barely barely even knows how to speak their own language couldn't even write a letter if they wanted to and all of a sudden you're thrust into a country that is asking so much intellectually from you man it's and it's yeah, tough when your parents sign your note when you pay when your parents sign your absence note and they try to say that you forged it that's when you got problems man <laughs> well that's it because it's gonna look forged every time it's gonna look like a third grader wrote your who'd you get your little brother to write this you're like no that's my dad because <laughs> it's all misspelled and incorrect oh man well listen my 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 brother sent me a letter the other day and he was pissed off at me and and i was trying to figure out what he was trying to say because at the end of the letter it, it had written f a h dash q and i was like <laughs> what's he trying and i was like oh my god you're trying to say f me what <laughs> that's how he spelled it <laughs> he spelled it f a h dash q i was like i don't know if that's retarded or genius because part part of me was like i think i'm gonna write it that way now that sounds awesome <laughs> But like when you have those people to 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 back you up with regards to education, you know it's it's a good thing to help out these kids and to let them know that it's really vital and important. <laughs> Joe, thank you for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Jessica on the Tom Lankin Show with Carlos Mencia. Hello. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Tom. How What's are up? you? Great. Um, I just I I live in Monterey Park, and as a matter of fact, when the last caller was calling, the one that said about Garvey and Atlantic, I was just driving by there. I'd been I was born in East LA, Santa Marta Hospital in Humphreys, but I've lived here in Monterey Park since I was, you know, born. Um, around all the Asians? Okay. I'm around all the Asians. Well, when I was little, it was actually Japanese American and, and white. I was the only um, bilingual student in, in school growing up here in Monterey Park. Um, and I think it's, it's the food, no matter what you come here, the food's always going to be good. Hey, but let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You lived amongst a... Did you ever learn a little bit of Japanese or something? Yeah. Wow. I don't know what you said, but I want to do you. <laughs> that makes a difference. <laughs> Just as long as you repeat that. <laughs> no, you know what? See, see, like, I respect that. I respect that because... You know what what I encounter so much of or at least we used to is this well I'm not gonna learn that. That's what they speak and that's what, you know what I mean? That that whole like, you know, Grand Torino attitude and it's one of those things where you gotta embrace all this stuff because America is that. Like if you don't understand and we're going more and more toward it than anything else. People, dark people are getting they're, they're getting lighter like Obama, you know. White people are getting darker like Obama. I mean, we're just intermingling so much. I mean, if you look at like the Olympics, we are pretty much the only country that look like leftovers from all the other countries. We look like what's left over for the buffet, and that's what America's up. So you got to kind of embrace that and understand that. You know what I mean? We're just this way. I don't mind. And you know what, Paul Rodriguez, I remember him saying this a long time ago, that eventually we're all going to end up looking like Filipinos, and that's fine. I don't care. As long as if if on Chinese New Year Day I don't have to go to school, well, that was back then, um, I'm fine. I'll embrace everybody's holidays. Well, that would Bring be great on. if we got everybody's holidays, but we don't. That would be great. That that's would what, be great. You know what? That's, what? that's what pisses me off about the people that are all anti-Christmas and stuff. Or the people that are like, oh, it's holidays. Why do you got to call it Christmas? And for me, it's like, look, we're giving your kids two weeks off and you get presents from everybody you know. Shut your pie hole. Like, what's wrong with it? Who cares who you want to give credit to? If it's Jesus or if it's Allah or Buddha. I don't care if you call it Shlimbugiri Day. If I get presents in the day off, good. Thank you. I don't understand why people don't want to take the day off and they want to get all technical about where this thing came from and who started it and where did it come from and is Jesus care. real? I don't care. There's a Christmas tree. Put some presents under it, you selfish bitch. Give me something. I'll give you something back. Exactly. You know what we always say to here growing up in Monterey Park? If the sign's all in Chinese, whatever, Mandarin, Cantonese. Um, it probably says, um, if you can read this, the lobster's 10 bucks for you. If you can't, then too bad, you know? So we go in and we'll ask for whatever. It doesn't matter. We'll ask them for the special. And, and they're so open-minded here in Monterey Park in the restaurants. It's the greatest thing ever. 
Well, that's good, man. I'm, I'm glad you have. I'm glad you have a good time with all the uh, with all the people that are there now. It's good for you, Victor, on the Tom Likas shelf and Carlos Mencia. Hello. Oh man, we should have asked her about the Asian penis myth. We missed <laughs> out. Tom. Yes. Hey, it's interesting to see you in the media. I mean, uh, I, there aren't very many Mexicans, and what's going on out there? I mean, what is it? I mean, I'm Mexican American myself. I, I'm. Not, by the way, I'm not Mexican. My mom's Mexican. I was actually born in Honduras. But I grew up okay. in East L.A., so just so you know, I don't want you to think that, you know, I am, because I'm not. Well, a Latin person. I okay. mean, you know. Sure. It's, we're not seeing a whole lot of Latin people uh, making it as much as uh, white people, Jewish people, you know what? and all I those don't, other people. I don't know that that's the case, man. I mean, if you look at TV, we're everywhere. If you count how many people are on Univision, Galavision, Telemundo, Canal 22, Canal 23, Canal 63, I mean, you know, we're pretty much everywhere. Look. America's all about this. If you haven't learned this from a black guy becoming president, all right, we got a president who, when he was a kid, could not go into certain restaurants, could not eat at certain places, and now he's a president. So Martin Luther King's dream has become a reality. It's not, no longer a dream. You can't complain about life anymore. You just got to go out there and do it. There's n Nobody cares if you speak Spanish or English or French. Bottom line is, and if you don't realize this, especially with this economy, can you make me money? That's where you live. Can you make me money? I'm telling you, if you have the most unbelievable idea for a video game, and it's all about these Mexicans that go to Mexico and fight this guy and blow this guy up, and then the Hondurans come and blah, 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 and it becomes Call of Duty Mexico, nobody's going to care if they speak Spanish during the video game, as long as it's great. America is all about can you make me money and contribute to our society? That's kind of why Brock pissed, pissed me off when he did that, when he did his his speech of acceptance, because he was all about, we need to change things and we need to fix things. And I'm like, you're the president, bitch. You're supposed to fix things. I voted for you so that you could fix things for me. And now all of a sudden, I got to do it. I'm like, there you go. Another black guy that doesn't want to work. This is not cool at all. At all. <laughs> fix my stuff, Brock. Fix it. Fernando of the Tom Likas show for Carlos Vencia. Hey, how are you, Carlos? How are you, Tom? Great. I'm good, man. Hey, by the way, I want to give shout-outs to, to my boy. She brought him up uh, to, to my boys, uh, especially uh, Paul, Paul Rodriguez. He's uh, He's been doing this for – he. Paul's been doing comedy for such a long time. You know, he was really the pioneer of, of the Mexican joke. Of the, He used to go on stage with a bandana back in the day, you know. So, you know, kudos for him for still being around and doing all that stuff. Well, go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. I was kissing ass. Carlos, because uh, uh, I've been looking at CSI and your show and everything. I just It's just very funny how you get away with words in Spanish that are the worst uh, words you can say. Yeah, but that, that's because uh, they don't know what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, I know. But, but, but the funny thing is you look at CSI, like mainstream TV and stuff, and, and they have the cholos, you know, the... the the, the banda guys, and they're saying the same words. I go, like, if the FCC knew, they will cancel the show immediately. <laughs> yeah, they would, but guess what? They don't know Spanish. Ha ha! Carlos Vencia, thanks so much. Good to see you. Love you, bro. Love Carlos you. Vencia. It's the Tom Likas Show.